Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna review the Ride Helix. This board is available in 146, 151, 153, 155, 157, 160, 156 wide, and 159 wide. This board features Ride's twin hybrid camber, which is basically just traditional camber with what they consider a very mellow rocker, but to me, basically just a flat spot right by the contact point before the upkick. I mean, it's gonna have snap and pop in it. You're not really gonna notice any rocker out in the tip and the tail. I rode this board at Copper Mountain. It was like early spring, so the groomers were really frozen, kind of firm. They softened up a little bit, you know. They had chunder snow on the sides of the runs, but perfect corduroy on it. Bluebird skies, moderately to no wind. And the temperatures were a little cooler, but they progressively got warmer. And I rode these with my K2 Thraxxus boots and my K2 Indy bindings. I've said it before and I'll say it again. This board is fucking stiff. Just super freaking goddamn stiff, especially right through that center pack from insert to insert. You know, this is just one of those boards that it doesn't have a lot of flex. I mean, granted out in the tip of the tail, I feel like they did add a hair, just like a little bit more flex, but it's still just such a stiff freestyle board. I mean, this thing is like on the highest end of freestyle stiff. So there's that. Um, on a plus side, it's stable. You got that going for it. This is one of those boards you can charge with. It's not going to get bucked around. It's going to push through anything in its path. You might notice a little bit of flapping out in the tips, but it pretty much deadens it before it hits the insert packs. So got that going for it, I guess. You have to be aggressive with how you load this board. I mean, you're gonna put all your weight into just getting it to rebound, and even then, it's not the snappiest board out there. It gets the job done. There are snappier boards in the ride lineup. It's an aggressive board, but it doesn't have like insane amounts of pop to it. This board really makes you work for it. On jumps, this is where it's suited, but especially larger ones. I mean, this is a jump guy's dream board, I guess, with its stiffness or a half pipe rider. It's fucking aggressive. It does pop off the lip. It gets the job done. I fucking hate this board. Fuck it when it comes to buttering. You're gonna put so much effort into this and it's gonna give you so much rebound and fight. You're just gonna feel it in your legs the whole time. Granted, the tips are a little bit softer than in years past, in my opinion, but still, this board just takes so much fucking effort. It's not worth it. In jibbing, you have to go so fast to compensate for how stiff this thing is. Yeah, there's a little bit of a sweet spot in the tip and the tail that'll lock into presses a little bit easier, and that camber profile, it doesn't really hug it, it just sort of sits on the feature and you can just teeter-totter if you will. There's no fucking flex to this thing. It's a slope style board where you're just going Mach 10 into the goddamn feature. When it comes to carving, this is where this board shines. But there is one caveat. You have to be going fast. If you're going slow, this board is super twitchy. It does not engage as well as when you actually have some speed behind it and you're putting some power into driving it. The harder you load it up, the more aggressive you can carve. Obviously, it does have that asymmetrical side cut, so it will compensate on the heel side edge for the way our anatomy is shaped and the way we ride down the hill. It's a board for going fast and ripping turns. If you're going slow, you're probably going to eat shit, die, and then, you know, they're going to have to cart your body off the hill, and that'll be one less person snowboarding, which actually probably isn't a bad thing. Never mind, that's a different topic for a different time. So who's this board for? Someone that's got tree trunks for legs and likes hitting big jumps. I mean, that's really who I would recommend it for. I hate this board. I'm never gonna like this board. Kevin even agreed with me that it takes forever for this board to break in, like a solid 30 days. No board should take that long to break in, but this one clearly does. The only good thing about this board is the side cut. It rips. I would love to see this side cut on the algorithm, the new board from Ride that's kind of their all mountain rad dad board, but hey, Whatever, this board probably sells to someone. I don't know who it is. If it's you, leave me a comment down below. I don't really care, fuck this thing. It could burn in hell. I just, I just really just do not like this board. Comparable boards. The Nitro Fury. 
the Jones Ultra Mountain Twin. This has been a review of the Ride Helix. Do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Do you own one? Why do you own one? Are you thinking of buying one? Why are you thinking of buying one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really want to support us because you're not pissed off at us, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I can tell you more. But hey, I got a video over there that'll explain it for you. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre. I'll see you in another video.